Well, we're back at it. We have a bye week uh, leading into the Air Force game. Uh, we practiced extremely hard on Monday with a heavy emphasis on our defense. Uh, we took yesterday off in which all four Aztec coaches were on the road recruiting. So we spent a day recruiting. It's part of the job, a big part of the job. And we're back to work today on the practice floor getting ready for Air Force, which everybody knows is a unique game in the fact it's an academy school. They run the Princeton offense. They're very disciplined. Uh, you look at their bench, they have like 20 guys on the bench. And so you watch one game, uh, there's a guy in there, he's like, where was he three games ago? So they've got a lot of very good players that uh, uh, get a chance to play in different games, and it's going to be a real challenge. Uh, we've only had three people that have played against the academy. Uh, we have Malik, Jeremy, and Max, Montana. The other six guys available to me for the game have never played against Air Force or a Princeton offense. So the next three days are going to be very important for our prep. How different is it playing against the Academy? Well, this, this team specifically, it's, 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 a lot, it's, it's a lot different than any other team we've played. They, they're so uh, focused on their offense, and they, they run it to basically perfection. So it's, it's, it's not really something we see too often. So it's definitely different. They get shots. They get three-point shots. Even if you play good defense, there's certain shots you know they're just going to get. And if they're making them, it's a difficult game. But if they're missing them, you've got a chance. So uh, as much as you say, let's take away everything, there's only certain things you can take away. They're going to get shots within their offense. They do against everybody. So we want to contest the ones we can. We want to prevent uh, any kind of back cut, layup type action. And then we want to contest as many threes as we can. They've shot as many is I think 36 or 37 three-point shots in one game this year. So we know they're going to shoot it, and if they make them, it's going to be uh, a real challenge for us. You mentioned the importance of recruiting. Uh, I don't know how much of this is you or Steve when you need to take over, but recruiting uh, McCoy from UNLV from Cathedral Catholic, um, how much did you guys put into that? And then, I don't want to say is it hard, but is it tough to watch a guy that you did recruit go off against you guys like, like McCoy did? You know, I recruited Brandon at Cathedral. I loved Brandon as a kid, but uh, it's like all recruiting. These kids have nothing but good choices. So when Jeremy came to us over Washington and other schools, or Malik came to us over Kansas, or Trey Kel came to us over Arizona and UCLA, if they go to those places, you can say, well, it's a good choice too. So Brandon had a lot of good choices. He visited uh, Michigan State. He visited Oregon. He never made an official visit to San Diego State. He visited UNLV. And he decided that was the best fit for him. So every, every kid chooses for a different reason. And uh, we're happy for Brandon's success in every game but two this year. And one of them already happened. So we're hoping that uh, when he comes here that we get a little uh, uh, payback on him and, and win that game. I thought we had a pretty good defensive practice on Monday, you know, and, and the veterans know what the veterans know. It's trying to bring a lot of the new guys up to speed. You know, we're playing three freshmen significant minutes, and, and as much as we teach, there's lessons they have to learn. And then we've got players that are new to the program, and Devin and, and Cameron Rooks that have played college basketball, obviously, but a first time on the floor for the Aztecs. So that's, like I said, leading the Air Force game. We have a a veteran team in a lot of regards, but only three players on this roster available have played against Air Force. So for six guys they're going to play, it's a whole new experience. So I like that. I like the challenge of trying to get them ready for this game. And that's what it should be. It should be a challenge to get their concentration level to where it needs to be and, and their focus and see if we can put in a game plan that they can execute. That's the fun of it. Well, we were real worried about Trey, obviously. He left the game at uh, UNLV in a walking boot, non-bearing, with crutches also. So he saw our doctors when he came back. I think, hopefully, we're looking at a minimal of two weeks he's probably going to be out. I think that would probably be the earliest, and it could stretch anywhere from three and beyond. So a lot of, he'll aggressively rehab it, but uh, he won't play against Air Force, whether the two-week window was Nevada and something happens in rehab, that, that I don't know, because that's still basically two weeks away. 
So we will see how the rehab goes, but definitely will not be available versus Air Force on Saturday. For both of you, I mean, you, you both know how much he's lifting up. He changed his body and, and actually became healthier, yet he just keeps getting unlucky with, with injuries. Just comment on that. I mean, it's certainly frustrating to him, but also... I'll let Jeremy talk on that because he's Trey's roommate. Yeah, I mean... That, that's frustrating for anybody, but um, I know that that hurts a lot for Trey because he did put a lot of work in during the summer. I mean, he was doing three a days at, at one point, so I'm sure that's that's extremely frustrating and, and, and that's been tough on his mental. But at the same time, he's one of those guys who's who's just going to keep fighting and, and just going to do what he has to do. So I'm sure he this is like the second or third injury he's dealt with. Um, he'll be fine. It's it's not anything he's dealt with, he hasn't dealt with before. So. Like I said, he's a hard worker, and, and he'll, he'll be back, and it's, I'm sure he'll be back without missing a step for sure. I'd like to say what a great job Jeremy did stepping in for Trey against Vegas. Seven for 12 from the field, 19 points. And so I'm not worried about uh, the next guy ready to step up. It was Jeremy in the last game, and it could be maybe someone else the next game. But in all truthfulness, too, you're losing a first-team all-conference guard and a senior captain. So we can say what we want about next man up. It always hurts when you lose a talented player out of the lineup. And so the good news is we will have him back down the stretch. How soon, I don't know. But uh, I know we're better with him on the floor at some point, uh, whether it's starting or off the bench, we're better with Trey in the lineup. Jim, how important is age in the locker room? I mean, it's definitely an important factor. I remember when I first got here, um, just that presence of having the seniors and, and and guys who have been here in the locker room before is is something that the freshmen need to have and and, and something that they need to see. So I do keep that in mind um, with me being an upperclassman now, just just trying to be a role model or just someone that um, the freshmen can look up to. So that's definitely something that is important. Coach, do you notice anything different with uh, with Trey Yeah, well, obviously, we've always had our greater success with veteran teams, whether it's uh, fifth-year transfers over the years like J.J. O'Brien or senior Winston Shepard or senior Skyler Spencer or senior Trey Kell and senior Malik Pope. You know, the seniors are, are what we've relied on over our history here. Now, even when uh, Kawhi had his magical sophomore year, he was out there with senior Malcolm Thomas, senior Billy White, senior D.J. Gay. So he didn't have, maybe have to step up and be a prime time player early in his career. He could just fit in and yet let his talent show. So we've always won with great senior leadership and senior players. And so uh, Malik has stepped up. He's pretty much stayed injury free, you know, but the games he has missed the last uh, five minutes of Fresno in a two point game, you know, the last second half of Washington against Washington state, you know, when they're out, it definitely hurts. Now, the other guys have stepped up and played magnificently, but uh, you want your best players, you want your seniors out there at crunch time. And, and unfortunately, we haven't had an opportunity to see that enough this year in, in critical games. Jeremy? Um, I, when I first... When Jalen first started practicing, I think it was it was pretty obvious that he's that he has something special about him, and I don't, I don't think when he does the things that he does on the court, I don't think any of us find it as a surprise. It's just there's Jalen being Jalen. So I would say this about Jalen: whatever you've seen, there's more there, and it will slowly start to come out. Yeah. I mean, he can shoot the three, and we let him take a three, but he's just not to the point where he's looking for it a whole lot. But Jalen McDaniel's a very good shooter, too. And I think maybe if it shows toward the end of this year or early in his uh, next year, he's got more to his game than he's showing. And, and we're letting him just develop at his pace. When he's ready to do it, trust me, he does it in practice, and we'll eventually start seeing some of that aspect of his game on the game floor. But he can attack to the basket off the dribble. He's an aggressive rebounder. He plays with a high motor. And I just think uh, he will continue to grow his game into something special for us, not only this year, but in the future. After, after watching the film um, and having a couple of days to digest, do you guys have any other ideas of what happened on defense? Is it, is it a, just a mental 
thing? Is it a technique thing? Is it all of the above? Um, well, I'd say it's just, I'd say it's a little bit of both. Um, we, we work so hard on just um, being in the right spot and, and, and closing out the right way and just doing things the right way. And you look back on film and you see that when you're not doing those things the right way, it, it, it costs you. So i say it was a little bit of both. And um, like I said before, it's, it's not really on the coaches, it's on the players. Uh, we, gotta, we just got to want it more on defense. And I think um, that was the emphasis last practice. We just got to want it more. We just got to take it more personal. Each guy guarding their man just has to take it more personal. So I think if we um, if we let up on the on the slip ups and the mental mistakes, we could for sure just get back to you know how how everyone's used to the aspects playing, and that's just uh, being one of those teams who just makes it hard for you to score. I mean, that's the beauty of a two way sport. This is not football where we have a defensive unit and an offensive unit. You play both ends, and so sometimes something that happens at the offensive end affects you what happens at the defensive end. And so uh, the mental ability to play 40 minutes both ends is a challenge. And uh, sometimes it's just uh, one or two mistakes that uh, can lead to uh, a run for the other team. So we're trying to shorten the, the time where we have mental lapses, where we make mistakes that we know we can't make. And that's, you know, uh, my title is coach, but it's the description is teacher. So we continue to teach. And uh, I have students that want to learn. That's the beauty of this. So they come to practice every day. They're attentive. They want to know what they're doing wrong. We teach them, and we continue to make progress. That's the challenge of coaching.